Hi guys, it's Kurt Provost here, your guide to all things new skin. And as your guide to all things new skin, I do feel a sense of responsibility to create this video. It will not be an easy video to make. Uh, I have just spent the last few days doing a deep dive into a very dark and murky world that is the world of anti-MLM. The, the people who are vehemently against the MLM industry and network marketing and basically any company that falls under that banner, there will be a video uh, by some, I don't know, some vigilante who is adamant that it is an absolute scam and that it is conning people out of money and that it ruins lives and all that sort of thing. So previously I made a video on this, this topic before because I have been, I have received some requests to create a video like this. And so I gave it an answer and you can check it out here. And that is what to do when your friends are negative towards you and your business. And to summarize that video right there is, you know what, there's always going to be positivity and negativity. There's going to be two sides of a coin and you can't really uh, divorce yourself of either of those sides. And so one comes with the other and be grateful for that because there's, there's two worlds that people will be attracted to and you can use it as a sort of sifting and sorting of, uh, of I guess your business contacts as they enter into your business world. And some will be attracted to that victim mentality, poor me, the world is against me, there are dark forces conspiring against me, paranoia world, or they can move more towards the positive pronoia world of the world is working for me, not against me. And uh, that will do a lot of the work for you. So we can be grateful that some people will be much more attracted to the negative news out there and some people will be much more attracted to the positive news. However, it can all be summarized like this. Our goal is to cross the swamp. It is not to fight all the alligators in the swamp because there are plenty of alligators out there, but they're not your alligator. There is a caveat to that, however, and it's the reason why I'm creating this video. If there is an alligator on your pathway, that is uniquely your alligator. That is your problem. And yes, you do have a duty to deal with that problem. And that is exactly what this video is about because uh, one of those alligators has strayed across my pathway as I attempt to navigate across the swamp. And that is because one of my team members uh, has had some articles and things sent to her about, about why it's a bad idea to do new skin, how new skin is a scam and all this sort of stuff. So I will get to the actual content in a moment and I will answer the questions, the many uh, questions that they have there that they give their own answer that is wildly incorrect and I will answer those discrepancies. However, first I think it's most important to deal with this idea of anti-MLM. What is this world? And uh, first off, I think that there's, there's a whole world out there that you may not be aware of that hates this industry. Now that doesn't come as a huge surprise because quite frankly, most people are not too fond of network marketing. I, that's, <laughs> that's not shocking news to us. I mean, I wasn't interested in network marketing before I heard about New Skin. I, I had been vaguely uh, kind of brushed against the network marketing world before I'd had people invite me to some things in this very weird way where they wouldn't really tell me what it was about. And I just thought, oh, it's one of those things. I didn't really know what those things were. So I can totally understand that. I mean, even while I was in the early days of working with New Skin, I had uh, a business contact who knew that I was working with New Skin and we'd already spoken about that and uh, we were meeting up for coffee just as friends. And then last minute they said, oh, can you meet at this address instead because I'm still there and I'm running late. We can just have coffee at my friend's apartment. And I was like, okay, that sounds a little bit strange, but sure, sure, I can do that. That was 10 minutes before I arrive. And I go up to this address and this apartment and on the welcome mat is a logo for a network marketing company. And I thought, well, that's a strange place to put a logo because people wipe their feet on that. I wouldn't ever put a logo on a welcome mat for that reason. But immediately I had this sinking feeling in my stomach that many people have felt before. You've probably experienced that as well. And that's when your trust has been betrayed. And so 
whatever happened, once that door opened, I was already going to say no to it. But this guy opens the door and he's got badges on that say, massive badges saying, uh, want to lose weight? Ask me how. And I'm thinking, geez, they really didn't pick their market well because, I mean, you can't probably tell from, you don't see below, but I am not fat. <laughs> I do not need to lose any more weight. I am a very slim, very tall build. And uh, that is, I'm not their demographic. Let's just put it that way. And so I sat down with them having a tea that their company had created and, uh, and listened to their business presentation. And it was horrible. It was just, they, they had ruined my trust. And this happens time and time again. And so it creates this negativity out there in the marketplace. I like to call it as this residual scar tissue is in the marketplace from people conducting the business like those guys. And you know what? There are people within New Skin who conduct the business in that way too. And that's part of the reasons why I create these videos is I, I hope that we can, we can together raise the standard of how we conduct ourselves in business because you don't need to try and manipulate someone into a business presentation. You don't need any of that. The truth is good enough with this company. I can't speak for other companies. I only know New Skin. I love New Skin. That will come as no surprise why I am your guide to New Skin. However, so that, that's to give some background, I can understand why there is negativity towards this industry. However, there is a, a, a group of people who actively hunt down and pursue and see it as their purpose, I guess, to save people from these companies. Number one, by making sure that they don't join that company, that they don't purchase products from that company. And number two, by uh, convincing distributors who maybe aren't having a lot of success or just really aren't sure with what they're doing and convincing them to leave that company. That is the anti-MLM world. So first off, let's cover some, some issues because I think the anti-MLM world, they see it very black and white. MLM, bad, normal business, good or everything else good, I guess. I, I don't really know. But MLM is definitely bad. It is off the table. So they don't care about the quality of the product. They don't care about how you conduct yourself in business because just by virtue, you could be the best business person in the world. You could be doing in this business in the most beautiful fashion possible. But because you are building a multi-level marketing business, in their books, you have a big red cross that's unethical, it's immoral, you are a bad person. And that is a really immature way of viewing the world. I think first and foremost, they don't fully understand the benefits of multi-level marketing, of network marketing, why it even exists in the first place. So let's cover that first, then we'll move on to a few other things. So multi-level marketing is, is not the, multi-level marketing is the compensation plan. That is a form of payment where you can get paid on multiple levels. Network marketing is the marketing plan. It's how we market the products. So we market the products through our personal network. There are some products out there that are best suited to a personal demonstration. They are best suited to a one-on-one -on -one consultation. They are best suited to someone sharing it as a referral. In fact, I'd say most products are best suited to being shared as a referral, but they don't, they don't sell well if you just sit them on a shelf and people only have the price to go on when there's a product that looks similar and it's sitting next to it and it's $100 cheaper, people will go for that based on the price or whether or not some celebrity has said, hey, I use this and it's great, you should use it too. So those two uh, marketing tactics don't work so well for some products, particularly those that are extremely unique, have a lot of science behind them and require an explanation. They are perfect products, however, for the network marketing business model because then you can have a trained distributor who can, understands the science, number one, and who can articulate that science and demonstrate the difference for the end consumer. That is a win-win for the consumer because they have a deeper understanding, they have access to a higher quality product, and is a win-win for the distributor who can earn a commission on that as well, and they can create a living from that. So that right there is a great little economy, but it can go further than that. I mean, there's other products out there 
like, uh, let's say weight loss. The reason why weight loss is so popular with uh, network marketing companies is because weight loss really does require that personal touch. If you just buy a diet product and you're left out there in the wilderness by yourself to lose that weight and to be consistent with it, it won't come as a surprise, perhaps, that human beings are not very good at taking care of themselves. In fact, we take care of our animals better than we take care of ourselves. And there's some fantastic studies that demonstrate that uh, we actually, when we are given medicine for our pets, we will make sure that there is all of it used up. They will do the complete course of it. They won't miss any days. Whereas for ourselves, when we're given antibiotics or medicine of some sort, the uptake rate of that is way lower than what it is for our dog or our cat. And that just gives you a glimpse inside the, the psyche that we have towards caring for ourselves. So a weight loss product makes a lot of sense to be marketed through a network marketing com company because you have a group, you have a team around you, you have that support, you've got a face that can deal with you. And so that's why certain products are marketed through network marketing. That's one of the reasons. Another reason why network marketing is a useful business model is that it leverages exactly what people pay huge amounts of money to try and leverage. And that is, of course, trust, because it leverages the trust that is inherent within our personal relationships. We already have that in place with our personal connections, our friends, our family. They already like, know and trust us. That costs a lot of money for a company to break into the market and to convince people that they are trustworthy to convince people that they are trustworthy enough to spend their hard earned money on a product and give it a try. So companies usually spend millions on advertising to achieve that. Whereas a network marketing company can just put the product in the hands of a distributor who already has that trust and they can leverage that trust. It's a very intelligent way of launching a product into a marketplace. The other thing that's beneficial about this, this uh, business model is that you can launch a product with minimum risk. You see, a conventional business model is the company takes all of the risks. They, they set up the product, they do the research and development, usually not a lot because they have most of their budget set for marketing and uh, logistics and distribution. And then they send the product to a retail store where they're paying for the staff, they're paying for the rent, they're paying for the overheads, everything to do with that store. And if something like COVID happens where it shuts down the traffic to that store, they can't sell anything. So all of that happens before a single product is sold. Whereas with network marketing, yes, the company researches and develops, they have to create a higher quality product. It has to be something of value. And this I'll get to in a moment is one of the main reasons or the main issues that I have with the network marketing industry is too many companies not creating products of high enough value. They're just like me too products. Anyhow, they have to create that product of high enough value. And then they put it in the hands of distributors who purchase that product at a discounted rate because they have the privilege of marketing that product as well. And then they use that product on themselves and they share their personal results and sales start happening. One of the marketing expenses that would usually be incurred in a normal business transaction and they only pay the commission when a product is actually sold. So it's a really intelligent business model from the company's perspective. But what about for the distributors? Well, because we get paid on multiple levels or we have the possibility of getting paid on multiple levels. I can't speak for other companies in the MLM industry, but for New Skin, you only get access to multiple layers of the compensation plan if you have actually built a real business. And this is the whole point here that people seem to get upset about multi-level marketing when they join and they act like it's a pyramid scheme, something that is illegal. They act like, you know what, I can talk to a few people, I can sign them up and then I am done. And then they get upset when they realize, oh shit, this isn't a pyramid scheme and I actually have to do the work. And like that blows my mind because everyone's like, oh, that's a pyramid scheme. That's a pyramid scheme. Then they join and they act like it's a pyramid scheme. 
can't you see the contradiction with this out there in the marketplace? I mean, even the people that I will reference later on, the content, they, they condemn this business. But then when someone says, well, I've been working with this company for 13 years and I've got a really stable income from New Skin and I love it, it's fantastic, I love the products, blah, 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 it's been really good for my life. They respond with, well, if you've been working for 13 years, you should have way more than a stable income. You should have something that's like CEO level. And that's where they really, the, the hypocrisy comes in because they don't appreciate and understand that, you know what, everyone is different. And if you want CEO level income, you're going to have to put in CEO level insane workload, like a startup founder workload to get to that level of income, to create enough value in the marketplace that you are paid that much. Most people don't want that. Most people use network marketing as a lifestyle business. And I am one of them. I mean, the, the dream of, you know, millions of dollars in the bank account is a lovely dream, but I also spent time with people who have exactly that dream and I saw how hard they worked. I saw how much work they put in and in my mid-20s, I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't need that so much. Maybe I don't want that as much as I thought I did. Maybe I just want something that gives me flexibility and choice and freedom to move wherever I want and doesn't get shut down when the world goes into lockdown like has happened. And so that's exactly what I did with my business. I built a lifestyle business and I have received the benefit of that lifestyle business for nearly a decade now. I mean, that's an incredible thing, but the whole anti-MLM world seems to condemn that and I, it really boggles my mind because ultimately network marketing is one of the best opportunities for an average person to go out there and have an extraordinary lifestyle. An average person who is not famous, who doesn't have special talents like they're a musician, they're an actor, they're a sports personality who doesn't have special talents like I am a, the world's number one salesperson at real estate or whatever it is. But they can go out there and learn some specific skills that anyone can learn and be consistent and build a business with the right products and the right company. And they can create a lifestyle that most people can only dream of. I mean, that is incredible that there is that equal opportunity available for so many people and I, this is what gets me about the anti-MLM world is that they are so against equal opportunity yet they seem to be all about, you know, we need a quality of outcome. The quality of outcome is a terrible idea. They get upset because some people, there's like 1% that has uh, insane success, but that's the same in everything. You cannot just uh, try and push someone's success down so that other people get a higher level of success. But what you can do is open the floodgates, open the doors to everyone and say, you know what, you have the same opportunity that that person that you see achieving an insane amount. You have the same opportunity as that person. And that's exactly what network marketing does. It opens the doors to everyone. And this is probably the, the greatest advantage of network marketing and also it's kryptonite. It is also the greatest disadvantage because yes, there is a low barrier to entry. I mean, for New Skin, there is no barrier to entry. It is free to join this company. And even that, the anti-MLMers, they have spun so that it's somehow a bad thing. And I'll get to that when I go through the com um, content and answer their questions. But uh, <laughs> again, it just blows my mind. So there is no barrier to entry. That's a great thing. That means anyone can join. Anyone has the same opportunity to do exactly what I'm doing or exactly what someone else that you see in this company is doing. At the same time, that's the biggest negative because it means there is no filtration for the people entering into this business. Because you see other businesses, other business models, they have high barriers of entry. If you want to start up a conventional business here in Australia, you need tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands to start that up. For example, my family just sold their business and uh, they sold it for over seven figures. So the people buying that business had to have over seven figures and that's before they've even made any money. Now it's a great business, they're gonna do fine, but that's a huge barrier to entry that most people can't come up with. I couldn't come up with over a million dollars, could you? To start a business? 
I mean, that right there is a massive filtration of people getting into business and they're going to take that business seriously. Imagine if you had over a million dollars on the line, you're going to get up at the crack of dawn and you're going to work until there is no one else coming through that store and you will do that for years and years to make sure that you get that return on investment. Well, with new skin, that's not the case. I mean, worst case scenario, if you bought every single product available, it'd be a few thousand dollars. And I definitely don't recommend people to do that because you'd have all this new product and you'd be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you'd probably quit like people do. They get kind of overwhelmed with that. But then there's the other factor is that you can return that product and you get your money back. I mean, where's the risk in this? Where is the negativity of that? Well, the negative side of this is because there's that no uh, that low bar of entry. So it means that all sorts of different people can enter into the business and maybe they don't have the right intentions. Maybe they are fueled by greed and a lot of people are. Maybe they have um, shady business practices. Maybe they're just in to get in quick. Maybe they actually think it's a pyramid scheme and they, they go out there into the marketplace and churn through people acting like that's the case. Or maybe they don't have any business skills. They were never business people and they don't understand how to run and build a business. All these things are possibilities and they happen on a daily basis as people come into the network marketing world. That's, that's the bad side, but I would always choose that possibility uh, and keep the door open than narrowing it and limiting it and putting a huge barrier to entry and only choosing the high quality people because here is why. You don't know who a high quality person is. And that's, you, you won't know what the person in front of you has within them, what they're going through personally, what potential they have, what possibilities can explode out of them until you put them in a business that has no limitations and no ceiling upon them, except for the ceiling that they make for themselves. So I would always choose that option because you cannot decide, it's impossible to work out who is going to make it and who isn't, who wants this and who doesn't, who is willing to work and change and grow and develop skills and who isn't. And that's okay. That's the diversity of this world and it's a beautiful thing. Nature loves variety and it's a super important thing to have. And this industry allows for variety. It allows for individual personalities to shine through and it gives them a business vehicle that they can grab hold of and do extraordinary things with if they choose to. There is no doubt that multi-level marketing is not perfect. In fact, I don't even believe in perfection. As human beings, we are deeply flawed creatures. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, every day I do battle within myself to make the right choices. And it's, it's kind of this battle between good and evil. That sounds rather melodramatic, but it's the truth because each choice is a little slip in one direction or the other. I either rise with the right choices or I fall with the wrong choices. And some days I win and some days I lose. But overall, I hope I'm moving in an upward trajectory. That's, that's the hope, like spiraling upwards instead of spiraling down because that is the default. And it's the same with companies. There's no perfect company. They don't exist. Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google. These are highly successful companies. They're not perfect. They cause a great deal of carnage out there in the world. They have massive shadow values associated with them. But they also do a great deal of good. And so you need to be able to, as an adult, view both those opposing ideas and weigh them up as you have personal responsibility to do. So what are the negatives of multi-level marketing? Well, first and foremost, I think most companies don't need to exist. There are way too many network marketing companies out there that are just created to sell some product and make the founders rich. It's, it's exactly the story that anti-MLM labels to all MLM, but it's not applicable to all. It is applicable to some of this industry. And that's, that's a problem because that makes, there is a kernel of truth in the anti-MLM community and that gives them legitimacy because they can point to examples and say, well, look at that. 
that's exactly what I said it is. So therefore, new skin is the same. That's where they go a bridge too far, so to speak, is they, they lump everything in together and they don't realize that, yes, there's the negative, yes, there's the positive, and uh, that's going to be in every industry. But we don't help ourselves. The, the network marketing industry doesn't help itself by uh, supporting companies that don't need to exist, that have another Me Too product that's not unique, it's not super special, it's not really helping people's lives, and it doesn't need to exist in the marketplace. And we don't help ourselves when we go out and conduct business in a greedy fashion, when we conduct business in a negative fashion. It just perpetuates this uh, negative stereotype that does exist in the marketplace. So that is a major issue that I have with the network marketing industry. And that's why I'm with New Skin. I, I didn't choose other companies for that reason. But having said that, even within New Skin, there are inevitably people who conduct the business in a way that I don't agree with. And that is why I create videos like this, to hope and to try and the scales a little bit in the direction that I feel like is the right direction, but I'm just one person. Well, who am I to say what is the right direction? But I can only go off what I have control over, and that is what I say on this camera, that is what I share with the people around me, and that is how I conduct the business. The rest I don't have control of. A big issue that I have with the anti-MLM world is that they, they appear to abdicate their personal responsibility. It's like, where was your personal responsibility when you researched and looked into a company? Were you just being greedy? Did you just hear what you wanted to hear? Because I know that I have definitely given presentations to people and then afterwards I've heard them say things and I'm like, I, I didn't say that. That's not at all what I was saying. But they heard their own thing and then they've just run off with that. They decided that that's what this is and I'm going to run with that story because it works best for them. We all do that to some degree. But you need to have enough emotional intelligence and maturity to say, you know what, I am responsible for the decisions that I take, for the actions that I take, and I'm not responsible for the decisions and actions of other people around me. I cannot control what is happening out there, but I can control what is happening in here. And that right there is key because the anti amlam world is trying to control what's happening out there. They're trying to control, like stop this big bad thing that, that hurt their feelings at some stage. And no doubt, they had a terrible experience. And as I have mentioned at the beginning of this video, most of us have, you know, there's that residual scar tissue out there and there's always going to be people not, not learning the skills of how to communicate with human beings effectively. Most people are terrible at what they do. I mean, I have an amazing dentist. He, he is like an artist. It is breathtaking to go and get your teeth done by this guy. He's just, He's amazing at what he does. And yet I had to go through so many dentists to get to that guy because most of them are mediocre at best. The rest were pretty poor. And that is for every single industry. I've dealt with lawyers, I've dealt with doctors, I've dealt with all different professions. The corporate world, look at that. Look at the people who work around you. Usually there's one or two team members who are doing most of the work and then there's those people who are just kind of cruising under the radar, trying not to be seen, trying not to do anything. Mediocrity is the default here. And so why do you think people are going to be any different when they join a network marketing company? Most people will be lazy when they join it. They won't attend the trainings. They won't learn how to conduct themselves properly within the business world. They won't learn how to communicate effectively with people. And then you take that and you say, that's the company's fault. That's the entire industry's fault. It's because they're in a bad, corrupt, unethical business model. That's why that's happening. And that's completely incorrect. That's just viewing the world through your own hurt feelings of a negative experience that you had. The main issue that I have with the anti-MLM world is that they are raging hypocrites. <laughs> And what I mean by that is that they have a vested interest in bashing multi-level marketing companies. And frankly, shitty multi-level marketing companies and shitty distributors doing just business in the wrong way really help them with that. They make it an easy job to go out there and bash these companies. It's a soft target. And that's the vested interest is maybe people started by just they shared their experience, their negative experience with a company. And then they realized that that got views. 
that got readers, that got eyeballs and attention, which is valuable in this digital market space. And so every single time they've created a piece of content about that, it gets more and more views. And there's one particular piece of content that I will review. I will get to it, don't you worry. I just need to set this up properly. Uh, this one particular piece of content is from a website that, that's supposed to be all about helping mothers, uh, you know, go out there and create an income. And they are prolific with their articles against every network marketing company they can get their hands on. And that's the issue is that they're riding on the backs of distributors. They're, they're sitting back going, you know what? Every single day there is going to be a distributor of a company somewhere talking to someone about their company and for the first time and someone's going to Google the name of that company and my article's going to pop up and I'm going to get eyeballs. And then that's potential for a future subscriber, a future reader and a sale because they sell courses or they have advertising going on their videos or they have a membership course happening or they have merchandise that they'll sell or they have a Patreon link so that people could um, donate to them to keep on the good fight. It's all these things or they have, they have some other thing, some supplement store that is in direct conflict with the company that they are putting down. As, as this other business that they can funnel people into. Attention is so valuable. They can build, even if they don't have a business, it is still valuable as a, a sense of creating a community, a sense of purpose and importance in your life when people are paying attention to you. It's like crack for human beings. We seek and crave attention and recognition and it gives us all these different payoffs. And that's why I say they're raging hypocrites because on one hand, they're condemning this industry, but they also rely on that industry, on that condemnation and that negativity. And quite frankly, I think it's just laziness. It's just like a, uh, it's just the low hanging fruit. It's kind of like how sarcasm is just a lazy form of humor. And people say, oh, no, no, I was, just, I was just making a joke. No, you were being a lazy person when you were being sarcastic. And it's the same thing with the anti-MLM world. They're being lazy in their approach to going out there and building their own business. And they're riding on the backs of distributors from many different multi-level marketing companies. And they're making those people's lives so much harder as a result. All right, guys, it is time to finally get into the content and answer the points that they make within, uh, well, this one is an article on a website that is possibly the longest intro I've ever made. <laughs> Running out of voice here. So this was sent to my team member and it is a, from a website called the Talented Ladies Club. I like that name, it's, it's very cool. So on a mission, they are on a mission to unlock the professional and personal potential of women through high quality content, training and social community. Sounds awesome to me. I, I imagine they would probably like new skin because that's exactly what we do, or at least with my team, that's what we do. However, they go on to clarify that we do our best to expose the MLM business model for what it is. They don't specify what they believe it to be in that section, but as you read through their numerous articles, I mean, they have, they have really cornered the market on anti-MLM articles for every company that uh, they could get their hands on. They seem to, to believe that MLM business model is, a, is an illegal pyramid scheme in disguise. So it's kind of like this illegal pyramid scheme parading around with different clothing on and uh, it's tricking people, innocent people, into shelling out their hard-earned money. So before I get to the article, I, I was looking around their website to get an understanding of the sort of things that they create. So it's created by Hannah Martin, who is an NLP coach, a hypnotherapist, a business coach, a trainer, and creator of courses. And Hannah created this, or according to the About Us section, she created this uh, back in, I think, 2013, uh, when she was looking around and seeing all these friends of hers who were highly successful within the corporate world, but they'd stopped to have a baby and they, they didn't want to enter back into that world. And uh, they were kind of looking for, for their different pathway in life. And uh, 
she wanted to equip them with the resources and possibilities and, and articles and information to help them through that. And that's essentially what she has been aiming to do, it seems. And uh, for some reason, a large part of that is critiquing the MLM world, which is strange because, I mean, the MLM world, best possible chance that those women have of creating a large corporate income would be within the MLM world. But there's a particular article that I looked around for and found this one that uh, popped out at me and it was five work from home ideas. I thought, okay, cool. So she doesn't like MLM. She think that's a, a no go. So let's see what the alternatives are that she suggests. I'm, I'm really curious to hear them and I'm sure you'll enjoy these. So here are the five alternatives that she suggests these ex-corporate women do. Number one, bake cakes. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not sure if she's ever baked a cake before, but I know people personally who bake cakes uh, and do exactly what she is advising. And let me just tell you, they are not free. Let's just break it down a little bit. I'm assuming that you're not going to be buying some package cake and just mixing that up because that's a generic product. And why would anyone buy that special cake from you when they could just do it themselves? So it's probably going to be higher quality ingredients. It'll be a, a more beautiful cake, a tastier cake in some way. You might have some skill in that area. Well, then the ingredients are going to cost a lot more. But let's just say roughly $15 to, to $20 or so for that particular ingredient set. And then there's the time and energy that goes into it. Usually it's in hours, depending on the quality of the cake. I do know some mothers who bake high quality wedding cakes and it takes them 48 hours to create these masterpieces and hundreds of dollars for the ingredients, but they charge hundreds of dollars as well. Ultimately, when you break it down, uh, they get, you know, it's $25 or $50 for this cake or whatever, whatever they charge. But it breaks down that they're making like 10 to $15 per hour of work or less than that when you extract out all the expenses of it. And how much can you scale? Because usually they're doing this around their children. They're doing it at nighttime while they're in bed. They're sacrificing sleep for these things. Like this is reality. I, I see this within my own team because that's why they came to New Skin is because it wasn't working out for them. I don't know how you can, in all good conscience, say, go and bake some cakes and you'll get that corporate income. Like, that's a great possibility for you. That, anyhow, let's move on. Sell your arts and crafts. Really? Okay. Maybe that's uh, the ladies at the markets on the weekends who sell their arts and crafts. I know those people as well. And it... <laughs> hours and hours into creating something, not even sure that the market actually wants these things. So let's move on, become an online personal assistant. All right, assuming you have the skills necessary for that and the technical know-how to do that. Uh, in, in the cracks of time, when your baby is not screaming, how are you going to be fielding calls for your, uh, your professional that you're being the personal assistant for? Like it's just, okay, it, maybe it's possible depending on where in the world you are. Be an English teacher, that's, that's probably the, the most realistic right there, is there, there are possibilities of doing that. Again, at best, that is going to be a minimum wage job unless you are able to leverage yourself in a huge way and get really good at it and create content, content and courses that you then market to other people. If I was going to do that, I would create a course on how to uh, make money as an English teacher and then you sell that course to all the other mothers looking to do that. And that looks like kind of what Hannah does is uh, sell courses to mothers who are looking for ways to generate an income. So she takes their money to do that. Anyhow, hypocrisy aside, uh, the final one is the most interesting one. If you have a business idea that's, that's a bit more complex and you want to scale it a bit more than your, your muffins and cakes and brownies, uh, then you'll probably need some capital, but you don't have the capital. And because MLM is bad and you, you can't enter into something that you don't really need any capital for, then what you should do is go out and get a loan from one of these short-term lenders, get one of those loans. Like, how can you in good conscience be okay with that being on your website and then condemning MLM, <laughs> getting people to go into debt 
to start up their business when there is a viable option that you don't have to go into debt for, that, that has infinite upside potential, that you can work around flexibly, your family, your kids, whatever other commitments that you have, another job perhaps that you have. Anyhow, all right, that's, let's move on to the article. So how much can you earn with MLM New Skin? And that's how pretty much all the articles are written. It's just MLM, that's the catch cry, and then the company name inserted. So this was updated on the 15th of the 5th, 2021, so last month. All right, first off, they kick things off by saying a very bold statement. It is virtually impossible to make money with them, them being new skin, which right there I take issue with <laughs> because, well, what the hell am I? <laughs> like, I've been with new skin for, well, for nine and a half years now, I've been receiving and making a profit every single month for nearly 10 years. I mean, don't I right there disprove that broad sweep of a statement that they just made that it's virtually impossible to make money with this company? I've been making money. So what about all my friends who are making money with new skin as well? What about the countless people who have earned over a million US from this company? Okay, uh, we'll move right along from there. So the financial report, they didn't like that uh, New Skin used the term sales leaders and they couldn't find that term in other areas because it was brand affiliates or something like that. I'm really not sure what the issue is with that. Uh, how much does it cost to join? They took issue with the fact that it's free to join New Skin. <laughs> Which is, I mean, it just stems to this intro that I'm referring to is when you have this negative bias and you view the world through this prism that... MLM is bad, MLM is bad, then even something that is positive and great news is interpreted in a bad way. And how they interpret it as a bad way is they said, well, you sign up and uh, you create this account, but that doesn't make you any money. So you're probably going to have to buy some products in order to show it to other people and give people a demonstration. And they're not 100% right there because, well, again, I'm going to disprove them with my own personal story. When I began with NewSkin, I didn't buy any product. I spoke to my first person, I connected them to NewSkin because I saw a product, a piece of technology, and I thought, you know what, my doctor is gonna love this piece of technology. It will be so useful for them in the clinic. That piece of technology is called a biophotonic scanner. Check it out if you don't know about it. And I went to my doctor and said, hey, you should check this out, I just got this scan. And I connected them with people who then they knew a lot more about it than me, of course, and that's the benefit of multi-level marketing is you have an entire team around you to help uh, educate you, to help train, to help do presentations for you while you don't know and understand a lot. And she checked out that technology, she checked out all the science, she checked out the company, and she bought a bunch of products and she implemented it into her clinic. That made me money. It made me more money then the business that I was building three to four months prior, the book that I was writing for it and the launch that I did for that, in fact, that cost me money. That didn't make me anything. That was in minus. And immediately from talking to the first person that I introduced to New Skin and just using social equity and connecting people to a great product, a great company, I was paid a commission. I didn't purchase any product at that stage. Like that totally destroys their argument about, well, you're going to need, yes, you can create an account for free, but that's not going to make you any money. Well, it did for me. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that by signing up, you're going to make money just, just magically like that. I did something for it. I went out and worked for it. That's what is required for this. You need to go out and connect people to new skin and you'll get paid every time someone purchases thanks to that connection. I mean, it's not rocket science here, but that is amazing because it blew my mind at that point in time because I realized I could start uh, earning something utilizing social equity, utilizing the personal relationships and connections that I already had in place. And I could then use that money to invest into my business, which is exactly what I did. I then bought some products and I did more demonstrations and even more products sold and it went and grew from there. But that right there is... is What's your problem with someone signing up for free? That's amazing. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's move along. 
They also said that you must give 14 days to cancel an automatic delivery. They were saying that you are required to do this automatic delivery and that's wrong. You're not. Uh, I don't know where they're sourcing their information from. I dare say it was an old uh, source of information because most of the stuff that they talk about is out of date. On that point, I found out at the end that they had linked to another person who had done this critique of New Skin as well to further support their argument as evidence. And they had pretty much copied 85% of that person's critique into their article. Like that's, their article was that article. And uh, that's a bit of plagiarism right there. That's, that's, for me, that's an unethical thing to do, but, and it's lazy as well. They, again, they're just copy and paste jobs on this. It's not true research. It's not, they're not going out there and trying the products for months at a time. They're not conducting surveys with the distributor force. They're not attending events or trainings or anything like that. They're just taking this, this copy and paste approach of MLM is bad. I had a bad experience and therefore that company is bad as well. It's immature. So in regard to their ADR, the automatic delivery, 14 day cancellation, no, there is quite literally a button where you log into your, the website and it says manage my ADR where you can control everything of your automatic delivery. I love that. You can check out this video here I share with how to um, set that up and, and organize it. But if you want to cancel that at any time, you can also put it on hold for three months. You just click the button and it says, are you sure you want to cancel it? And you say yes, and it's done. Where's the issue? Here is the big kicker. They say that 85% of the distributor force earned no commission at all. So 85% of people are making no money. And those who did earn a commission, there was a large percentage that earned roughly $36, which is, you know, not a great deal, but doing better than the lady who's baking her cakes. Uh, <laughs> and the, the reason that is, is, is quite, and I see this time and time again in the anti-MLM world. They, they point to the statistics of income because New Skin is a publicly listed and traded company, has been for over two decades now on the New York Stock Exchange. So everything is audited, everything is publicly available. And so there are the income reports, the financial reports. And people say, well, but look, it's only a tiny percentage that are making money with New Skin. And it's only uh, the, the top 0.1% or whatever it is that's making like the top income levels. And, and that's because that's a pyramid scheme. That's why, because the bulk of people making no money. The bulk of people who create a distributor account, a brand affiliate account, it's called these days, do so because they want to access the product at the wholesale price. They don't do any business. They have zero interest or desire in conducting business. Now I have retail customers. They're taking advantage of the 100% money back guarantee. I've got a great little retail business. I also have probably 85 to 90% of my distributor force who are glorified customers. And that is because they referred someone to me. So as a, a uh, benefit or incentive for that, I will give them wholesale price. It's the difference, it's a business strategy. It's the difference between making more money upfront, but maybe only having one or two purchases, or making less money, but having someone who purchases for the lifetime of your business. And that's why I have had a business that's been making a profit for nearly 10 years now because I've got people who are getting the best possible price. They have a distributor account, but they don't care to do the business at all. They don't do the business. And those who make that $36 or whatever it is now uh, per year, it's because maybe they referred someone to me. I share that bonus with them because I like to incentivize people to refer new contacts to me. It's just good business. And most people out there are building their business in that way too. So your statistics are null and void. They're, they're useless. And I don't like statistics anyway, because as I said in the intro, when you look around you, <laughs> in every single profession, there is a top 1%. And there is a top 0.001% of that 1% that are doing truly insane things. I mean, if you took a look at the 1% of the population that has majority of the wealth of the world, there's a reason for that. Nature likes variance. We're not created equal. We all have different and unique set of talents and personalities and tastes and preferences. And so those of us who are building a lifestyle business 
we're very successful at that. But if you look at the statistics and go, oh, well, you're only making 30,000 a year or 50,000 a year, you're, you're not doing all that well, or you're making 5,000 a year or $500 a year. Maybe that's exactly what the person wants. Have you ever considered that? Have you ever spoken to a distributor force? They reference controversies that happened in China in the past and uh, New Skin has been in China for a long time now. After Japan and Korea, China grew to be the largest market and has remained the largest market for New Skin. And uh, before I dive into that, I just want to say, have you ever been to China? Have you ever conducted business in China? I studied Asian studies at uh, Australian National University and I majored in Mandarin. And so I spent quite a lot of time in China and it's a different place. They ban basically everything that is a large Western corporation there. They watch and monitor them closely. There are always controversies happening. It is a communist run country, but they do it in a very different, uh, their own capitalist flavor on it, <laughs> but they are extremely controlling. And as such, there are many different things that can go wrong in China. The first one, it was completely ridiculous. Distributors were making claims that they really shouldn't have been making. They were making claims that products were gonna cure all sorts of different diseases. And that is not what New Skin is about at all. That is, the distributors are totally at fault there and they set New Skin up for a great liability. But New Skin, you know, paid whatever the, the cost was. I think, I believe it was 545,000 or something like that as a little fine and they were allowed to continue conducting business. Another one was when a Chinese newspaper ran an article about New Skin being a possible pyramid scheme. And this is, you have to understand doing business in China, it is, as, as I did with my Chinese business partner a number of years ago before I got into New Skin, he always explained to me, Kurt, Doing business in China is like this. It's very easy to go from small to, to medium size and medium size is, you know, tens of millions. But then to go from medium size to big, that's when you start hitting the interest, the personal interests of different uh, political figures. And that is when you step on the toes of other, and it's a very complicated game. Well, what happened with New Skin is New Skin went through huge growth. It was just going up like this. Other companies don't like that, uh, government possibly, like there's so much that happens behind the scenes in business. And so newspaper ran an article about saying that uh, New Skin could possibly be a pyramid scheme. And so the, the government then said, okay, we'll investigate and check that out. And you know what? New Skin's still doing business there. We passed that test. It, it got sorted out. It's, it's, but there you go, there's like dirt that can be brought up and a reason for you not to do business with new skin. Well, are you doing business in China? Because it's very different there. And unless you're building your new skin business in China, you don't really need to worry about what is going on there. And then they go on to cover, again, this is all reference from other people, like a guy called Ethan Vanderbilt, who's built an entire kind of reputation and business, if you will, on bashing MLM. He is the anti-MLM kind of guru. And uh, he talks about the five red flags of pyramid schemes. And they go through and they say, New Skin hits all five of those red flags. So let me go through what those five red flags of a pyramid scheme are. Number one, recruitment is unlimited. Why on earth would you cap recruitment. I mean, what business do you know that wants to put a limit on how many products they sell and how large they grow? They don't exist. We all want to uh, sell as much as we possibly can, grow and expand our business as much as we possibly can. Why on earth would you put a limit on highly productive human beings? If they want to go out there and build a massive distribution network, let them do it. <laughs> Why would you put a limit on that? Number two, advancement achieved by recruitment, not appointment. Again, in what world do you want someone to advance within a company, a network marketing company, based on the appointment of someone superior to them? That sounds like the corporate world. That's the exact thing that we don't want. We want to advance based on competency. This is what the network marketing, or at least new skin, is all about. If you are competent, 
If you go out there and you learn the skills and you build an organization that has huge volume, you will advance inevitably. You cannot not advance in that situation. There is no limitation upon your head. There is no old man saying, you know what? Well, maybe in five years time, I'll promote you to this. I don't want anyone telling me when I can or cannot advance in this compensation plan. It is totally up to me. So there's a ridiculous red flag as far as I'm concerned. And I, I'm really wondering about who creates these red flags. So number three is you have to pay to play. And as I've already covered, that's simply not the case with new skin. So I really don't know where they're getting their information from. Number four, MLM companies that pay five layers deep in their multi-level marketing compensation plan. Well, you know what? New Skin pays six layers deep. So we go one step further on their pyramid scheme radar. But the reason why that is important is because that is the most generous compensation for leadership. And that is ultimately what New Skin really wants to attract into their business. If you are a highly productive human being, if you are a born leader or you want to become a leader, then this is the place for you because you'll be truly financially rewarded as a result, as if you are a leader of leaders. Now that is not everyone, that is a rare thing indeed. That's why most startups fail, the vast overwhelming majority of them fail. And that's because of the leadership. It is really rare quality to find and that's why New Skin wants to incentivize that. It's also the best possible chance having a six layered compensation plan at 5% on each layer. That's why it's so generous that a normal person can have of creating leverage within their life. Most people never experience leverage. They're always working for someone else. They're always trading their time for a certain amount of money. Even a doctor doesn't have leverage unless they have a, a clinic where they are leveraging out other uh, healthcare practitioners within that clinic. It's like the real estate agent who the owner of the real estate agency has all the leverage in that situation because they've got the sales leaders out there selling the homes for them. That gives them some sense of time freedom. They also maintain all the risk of the overheads of that business and the risk of training someone up and then going them leaving because they want their own leverage and setting up their own uh, agency and becoming perfect competition. Well, you know what? In this business model, we want people to be successful. I go out there and I help people build a business. I help them make money. If they make money, then that's going to help me as well because ultimately it's more volume in my organization. And I get paid based on my ability to do exactly that. My ability to go out there and have customers that love these products, go out there and, and teach people how to sell these products effectively and create their own income stream. That is the incentive right there. Number five, most of the payout goes to the upline. So there's an excessive incentive to recruit. Again, this is incorrect because I am a relatively low level leader within, if they looked at me within the rank and scheme of, of the overall picture of new skin organization, I'm like a, a tiny blip on the dot. I, I barely even register. And yet that has been perfect for my life because I've had a wonderful business of people consuming products on a regular basis that has set me free so that I could continue to travel the world to read all the books like I love to do. And so I have created this lifestyle business where it's not necessarily out there hardcore recruiting as much as I possibly can. If you want, you can go and build a larger business. You can go and do whatever you want with this business, but there is no more or less incentive for one thing or the other. It just depends on what people individually and personally want to get from their business. If you are happy with a few thousand a month coming in from your retail business, then go for it. I mean, I know a team member who I'm part of the same organization as her, and she makes insane money, and she doesn't have any downline. It's just retail sales. It's a normal retail business. And she's super happy with that. I would be too. <laughs> it's, their information is just so, so incredibly biased. They haven't really looked into this. They haven't participated. They haven't built this business. They don't know or understand. And they probably never will because as I said at the very beginning, 
they're incentivized not to. They have found an absolute gold mine of attention. And if they just keep pumping out content that is negative and biased and against MLM, they're gonna keep on getting eyeballs on their other content. And you know what? If that works for them, if they can sleep at night with that, so, so those eyeballs eventually buy their courses and hopefully do something that, well, good for them. But I do feel it's hypocritical that they label those of us who choose to build a network marketing business as unethical or immoral while they're selling courses that quite often I teach people for free. You know, I have people come to my organization and they just paid $2,000, $3,000. That's the normal price range for an online course to learn online marketing, to learn some sort of skill that we end up teaching within our business for free. And they say, oh my God, I learned more from you than I did from that course. Good luck getting a refund from that course. And I've had people pay way more than that in the tens of thousands for courses. All right, guys, hang in there. We are almost at the end. I'm losing my voice, but let's get there because this part cracked me up. Uh, they were talking about million dollar earners because uh, they were saying that, well, there's this claim that every six days someone earns a million dollars with new skin. And uh, now that has sped up and it's like every three or four days we have a new million dollar earner. And they were saying, well, you know, majority of the business of new skin is in Asia. Uh, majority of the turnover of new skin is coming from Asia. And so being uh, a millionaire there is less impressive than being a millionaire in, let's say, the UK, which I think is the base for that website, or the US. And they give this example of what uh, a million of the local currency equals in pounds, in British pounds. So in China, a million RMB equals 110 thousand pounds. So they're like, you know what? A millionaire there isn't, isn't uh, as impressive. In Taiwan, it equals 24,000 pounds. In India, we're not even open in India, but they gave that as a, a, an example, is 10,000 pounds. In Japan, it's 6,000 pounds. In South Korea, it's $670. And in Colombia, it's 250 um, pounds. I said dollars before pounds. The thing is, that they are so completely wrong with this. It's not a millionaire in the local currency. It's a million US dollars. So it's the exact opposite of the statement that they just made. I mean, this is what I mean. There's so many inconsistencies. There's so much that's wrong with this article. It blows my mind. And here's the catch. They don't have a comment section. They don't even have it opened up so that you can create some sort of intelligent rebuttal to all the inconsistencies, all the mistakes, all the gross accusations that they make. You can't even respond to that. It, it's just there for their perverted incentive of getting more eyeballs onto their website. So ultimately they can sell more of their products to people. And that just makes them basically what they're accusing us of being, as far as I'm concerned. And I, it's, it's the greatest hypocrisy. And so MLM reps need to lie to recruit. Really? I mean, what are you basing that on? It's, how do you substantiate that? What, what does that even mean? Am I lying when I do my videos? I'm going through and reading off the product information page. I'm researching into the active ingredients in things. None of that is a lie. And at no point do they really touch on the products other than saying they're rather expensive. <laughs> Compared to what? Like what, do you know anything about the products? Do you even understand how different they are to most of the things that you're comparing them to? I don't even know what you're comparing them to, but I'm going to assume that you're comparing them to the stuff found on eBay or Amazon or Alibaba or whatever. And th that, there's a video. I, I've run out of time to really go in and analyze her video, but there's a video from this famous kind of anti MLMer -er that goes in depth into new skin. And the product section, she talks about two products. She talks about 
the whitening toothpaste, AP24 whitening toothpaste, and she talks about the Lumi Spa. The whitening toothpaste, she is getting all of that information from a very angry British anti-MLMer that's digging in and saying that the active ingredients uh, aren't good and that it just paints your teeth white and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they don't even understand the mechanism of action of the toothpaste. It's such a basic product too. And then they talk about the Lumi Spa. And she gives an example of how, well, here's the price of the Lumi Spa in the US, which is $199, but you can find it on Alibaba, which for those of you who don't know, is a Chinese website where you can wholesale a whole lot of stuff for cheap from China. And it's like $19 on there. And the image that they show is not the Lumi Spa. It's a fake Lumi Spa that looks so ridiculously fake. It's just, it's the same sort of shape as the Lumi Spa and it's got that blue head. It, it's nothing like the Lumi Spa. It's a knockoff of the Lumi Spa and they're using that and saying you can get, so you can see how much they mark it up. That's insanity. Like do some proper research. That's not even the product that you're pointing to in the picture. Okay, as you can see, I'm getting a little worked up by this. It's just, it's so silly. It really is so silly and it's damaging. It does hurt people's businesses. And there are people out there who rely on their new skin commission for their families. And you're out there disparaging this company without even investing the time and energy to really try out its products because that is what it's all about. I mean, in that video as well, she's also digging into the founders' personal lives, the fact that they're Mormon. The, she finds it suspicious the number of charities that they have set up and that they contribute to. Or the fact that they have donated to political parties and political candidates, a Mormon political candidate uh, who was running for the presidency. Like, why does that matter to you? Do you not understand that people have stuff going on in their lives? That every single day, as I said before, is this choice of trying to move towards good and move away from evil, but we don't always win out. We have personal tragedies that go on every single day for us, and you know nothing of that. And you sit there and judge someone who has gone out there and created something amazing that has transformed so many people's lives and that continues to have a positive impact in the world way beyond anything that you have ever done. And you sit there and judge that and condemn those people. I find that it, it's too much. It's, that's why for the last few days as I've been diving into this world, I, I find it disappointing. In, I'm disappointed in humanity when I see this sort of stuff because it's... <sighs> Where has the charity gone? Just the giving people the benefit of the doubt. Where, why is it that you have to twist everything to fit your own agenda? Why can't there just be people, human beings who are flawed and imperfect, trying to make the best of their time on this planet? And as far as Mormons go, the little that I know and the, the few interactions that I've had with Mormons have been wildly positive. I mean, they seem to be a group of people that see it as their, their purpose to be as productive as possible with the short period of time that they're on this planet. And I think that's a really admirable quality. And charity is a huge part of that religion and that belief system. I am not religious <laughs> in any way, but I can really respect that. And uh, I don't need to find fault with that or, or dig up dirt on those people to try and discredit them and what they're doing. I think it's much better to look at the results of their actions out there in this world because you will never be able to be inside another human's head. So the best way you can judge what their intentions are is to look at the results of the actions that they take and the results of their actions with this company, with these products that they have created are incredible. You just need to go out there and try the products and actually spend some time with some distributors and get to know this place a little more than sitting back in your chair in this virtual world that we have created for ourselves. So to wrap things up, because I think, well, I think that's enough right there. My name is Kurt Provost. I am your guide to all things new skin. You know what guys, please be kind with each other. Please give people the benefit of the doubt because you have no idea what they're going through. You are always going to have people who condemn what you do whenever 
you go against the norm. Whenever you go out there and try and do something that is a little bit different to what everyone else is doing. And quite frankly, have you looked around recently? What everyone else is doing sucks. It's not the life that I ever wanted for myself. And that's why I was attracted to new skin. That's why I was attracted to this business model because it offers me the possibility of creating a better lifestyle than any other business model. And I truly mean that. I hope that you create the lifestyle that you're looking for with this business model. And I hope that this video helps you. Perhaps if you have someone who's a bit skeptical, maybe they're sending you stuff that's anti-MLM, maybe you can send them this. I don't know if it's gonna turn out to be a useful video or not. It is very long at the moment. Uh, if you like this video, please like, comment below, share your experience with New Skin, share the positive stuff because there's so much negativity out there. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified next time I create a video like this. I hope it's helpful.